Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I know some of you are still entering our webinar platform, but we do want to welcome everyone that's here. The rest will catch up with us in a moment. But today we're going to cover the topic, how to envision and create a comprehensive cleaning program. Strategies to do more with less and provide an impressive, clean, safe, and healthy environment. So really a good topic today when we think about what everyone's dealing with out there in the world of cleaning. And this, this event, this webinar event is sponsored by Brady IFS, Granite School District and the tenant company. So we have all types of uh, good information to share with you today as we go through our presentation. We have with us, of course, me, I'm Jeff Cross, the media director of ISSA. Micah Murphy is the maintenance and custodial supervisor with Granite School District. And Mark Larson is a general manager in Utah of Brady IFS and Eldon Reed, senior account manager with Tenant. So we have a lot of expertise to share with you. Uh, we do have a Q&A session at the end of our event today. We plan about an hour for this and plenty of time to answer your questions. So you'll see that option uh, to enter the, the questions you may have in the Q&A section of the webcast. So be sure to do that. Think as we go through this, what um, questions you might have that you need help with, and we'll see if we can get some help for you with those. I wanna cover just a few points before we get to our panelists today. Uh, I title this, The World As We Know It Today. And I think you might agree that some of these numbers you see here, you see these issues with your own facilities. Um, a lot to digest here, right? When you think about what this represents. Uh, if you look at your top left of your screen, we see some important issues. And this is something you might see in your own facility. Uh, the health and safety, improving facility image, security, and so on. But notice the top three problem areas there. Uh, the restrooms, carpet, entryways, and foyers. Don't you see that? It's really the heavily soiled areas and the ones people see, the ones people use the most. And really where you probably find yourself spending more time and more of your cleaning budget on those areas. What this means is, Anytime you can increase your technical skill, help your staff uh, get better equipment, better products to use in your cleaning, you see better results. The one at the bottom there about who has the final say, isn't that what it's really about? Because as cleaning professionals, as managers and, and business leaders, don't you know what needs to be done to get the job done right? Um, you might fall in at 33% where you have sole purchasing power. I think all of us would agree that would be nice if you're the one in charge of cleaning, that you are able to make those decisions for what you know your staff needs. 17% have experienced more centralized purchasing processes over the past last year, but still have final say. And then 13% have experienced a decrease in authority. Uh, we don't want to see that happen, but it's reality. But I think what we can all agree on when you look at these numbers here is that the majority of those in the cleaning industry, in a, if it's a BSC, a building service contractor or a facility, whatever organization it is, most do not have final say. So how do we influence those who can help us to get the products, the equipment we need? You know, that's a big question and we're gonna get some help with that today. Some strategies that you can use in your organization. If you look at the top or the right side of your screen, you'll see some of the biggest concerns I think the one there about employee health and safety is an obvious one. You know, we have to have a safe work environment. Our employees need to be uh, healthy and safe and trained as well as we see number two. Think about that. If your staff is well-trained, they're able to use the products, the equipment in the best way possible with the budget you're working with. So all these really make sense, don't they? Um, what does this really mean? Well, you think about it, uh, today's webinar is designed to empower you to deal with these challenges. So do this, sit back for the next hour or so and soak it in, think about what is brought up and apply it to your own facility or your own organization. Look for that one or two or maybe more takeaways that will really help you with your operation. And I think if you do that, you'll find some solutions to your challenges.
Well, let's get right to our panelists. Our first one who's going to speak to us today is Micah. And uh, Micah, why don't you take a moment and tell us about Granite School District? Hi, everyone. So Granite School District, we have about um, 89 schools. We have 96 facilities in total, which amounts to about 9 million square feet. Um, we do educate about 65,000 students per year and have 10,000, roughly 10,000 staff members to do so. Um, with that, we have about 775 um, custodial and maintenance staff to help maintain these buildings. Um, with that being said, we have kind of been hit with the labor shortages that everyone's been feeling across the country. And so we're trying to find our best solutions to help our, help our employees. Very good. Let's move on to this. Why don't you talk to us about some of the challenges that you were facing with maintaining a clean and safe space? Maybe add in that aha moment that made you realize you needed to reapproach how you were cleaning. So our biggest issue that we've been facing is staffing issues. And especially right now with COVID, we definitely have a larger effect, but we've been facing this for some years now just because of our wages. So because we are government funded, we've kind of had to go off of the minimum wage and people are able to find better jobs that pay a lot more. And so we've we've struggled with this, with this for some time now. Um, we definitely took advantage of our ESSER funds there and um, trying to see what different technologies there were there and different solutions. I think the aha moment was, at least for us, we were able to find um, better equipment that could help our guys and listening to them too. So one of the biggest things that we've had so far is a robotic auto scrubber that we have in some of our high schools, which has helped out tremendously. So they drive it up to the um, place and program it and let it go. And it, it helps with time making them more efficient. We are constantly given more work and more work to do more responsibilities but we don't have the manpower to do it so we're trying to find smarter ways of doing this that are just as efficient as if we were fully staffed and not facing so many issues very good i know that later on we're going to talk about some of this equipment and robotics as well so um, everyone should be ready to learn about that it's very interesting but um micah let's talk about about this uh, partnering, you know, it, it helps when you have a good partner. And with Brady, how did you come to partner with them? And have you worked with them in the past? Or was this a new relationship to help you with your challenges? And so we met a couple years ago with Brady, and it was actually for a carpet sweeper demo. And that's what kind of opened the relationship. Um, we definitely had uh, more encounters as the years went on. And the biggest one was the robotic auto scrubber. And after um, going through that process, we had um, quite a bit of interactions trying to get things figured out. Um, one of the, my favorite things when it comes to the Brady and Tenant is the customer service that we're given. I, If I ever have a question, I always feel like I can call them and I would get an answer and a timely response at that. And they've been great working with us and trying to figure out solutions when we're faced those challenges. Yeah, it's always good to get the help you need, that's for sure. Uh, let's change gears and visit with Mark Larson, the GM of Brady in Utah. And uh, Mark, good to have you on our webinar today. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Brady Industries, your relationship with Tenant, and how you approach the school's challenges as well. Absolutely. Happy to do it. So we're uh, Brady Industries uh, is a third generation janitorial supply company. In December of last year, we went through an acquisition with IFS or Individual Food Service. And so what that allowed us to do is really expand our footprint and resources. It took the strength that we had and then merged with the strength that they had to make us a, a, a really just add significant strength to what we had to offer and to help our customers. And that merger kind of pushed us past about 40 locations, 40 distribution locations, and allows us to really serve in every segment of the business. We work with a lot of government and education. 
Uh, it's been great to work with Granite School District in this regard, and we're grateful for the partnership with them. But healthcare, building service contractors, hospitality and gaming, uh, travel, food service, you know, essentially every segment we've been able to kind of expand and take our business there. Brady's been built off of a lot of really good relationships. And I think that's one of the pillars that we pride ourselves on is relationships, not only with manufacturers, but with customers. Uh, Micah and her team at Granite have been great to work with. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure to work with people that are both uh, reasonable, that have great business discussions and allow us to help in the ways that we can. One of the other core so things that we work on a lot is what we call connection. And so connection is us being able to connect the dots for our customers. That includes products, that includes manufacturers, that includes technology, that includes process. So whatever way that we can connect the dots for our customers to provide real solutions. Uh, the third pillar is solutions, right? Everybody has an issue or a problem and we're here to provide a solution that is best, the best that we can find and support with them. And then ultimately, when we have relationships, when we have connection, when we provide solutions, we'll demonstrate value to our customers. And ultimately, if our value can exceed that of the competitors that we have and, and the people that we're working against, uh, then we'll have an opportunity to build on that business. And so we really enjoyed working with Tenant with the Granite School District. You know, as Micah said, this kind of started in a different direction, uh, as a lot of these opportunities do that we... Uh, we started with a need that they had based on a school, and that was a discussion. And that discussion led us to ask a lot of questions and understand a little bit more the hard things for the district and what they were battling. That led to a second demo with a different piece of equipment. That, that demo didn't quite match up to the need that the school really had. Again, more questions, more discovery. And then ultimately, we were able to get to this place where we worked with these T7 EMRs and and an automatic or autonomous opportunity for the schools to be able to really manage the problems that they had. Uh, we have a great sales rep that's worked with the district, Matt Johnson. Uh, we have an adage around here that says that trust is built in drops and lost in buckets. And uh, I think it's a lot of drops that went into this relationship uh, with the school district, with Granite and Micah and her team to be able to have an opportunity to provide here. And so we're just super grateful for tenant and for Granite and for the opportunity we've had to work with them and provide this solution. All right, good information. Uh, let's tee up this site survey process. Today, we're going to bring in um, Eldon Reed. He's our senior account manager at Tenant. And Eldon, why don't you talk about what we see here? Uh, what are you looking for when you conduct a site survey? I'm sure everyone's interested in learning about this because it can help their organizations as well. Absolutely, be happy to. Um, you know, this is a really important process because this helps us uh, as uh, distributors and as manufacturers to find out what the real needs of the customer are. So first, I'm going to want to make sure that we're talking to the right people, those that uh, are going to know the high level questions, as well as those that are in the trenches, you know, doing the work so that we can get a good perspective uh, as to what their needs are. So some of the typical questions that we would ask would be, uh, you know, what are your cleaning goals and what are you looking to accomplish so that we can get, uh, you know, start the, start the conversation out with, you know, learning what their needs are and what they want to accomplish. Then we'll ask the, you know, what are their challenges and what are they experiencing right now? And what are the things that they would like to change? Uh, just finding out some of those pain points that, uh, that we can help to uh, solve later on. Uh, we'll go in and ask if they've mechanized any of their cleaning process. Are they still using mops and buckets? Or are they using automatic scrubbers? Or are they using robotic technology? Or are they using sweepers? Um, and if they do have some of that, then we, we definitely want to take a look to see what they've got uh, so we can see what kind of condition it's in, uh, how they're using it. Uh, we ask about their likes and dislikes about the equipment. You know, is, is battery runtime uh, efficient for them and enough time for them? Uh, is it covering the amount of space that they need to? Is it getting into the areas that they'd like to have it done? And uh, then, they, then we talk about, you know, safety and how does that uh, play into their cleaning process? Just trying to find out all the different uh, points that they need to, uh, to talk about to find out what their needs are. 
uh, we definitely will go out and look at the areas that they're cleaning and uh, find out how often they're doing it and who's doing it and uh, what time of day and, and those kind of things. Um, then we also talk about you know, preventative equipment servicing and how's that handled at their facility. You know, do they take care of them with them themselves or do they uh, use an outside vendor? And um, we ask them about if they're currently partnering with a cleaning supplier like Brady Industries. Uh, if so, then we know that they're already going down that path and, and we're able to help uh, support that, uh, that relationship. Uh, obviously, we want to talk about how funding, how equipment is funded and how the purchase process is, what their time frame is, who, who is responsible for that and how does that process work. And then once we've figured out all of that and, and we've got all that information, then we start boiling it down to the, the certain points that we need to talk about and the different options that can be available and, and how that would help uh, the individual customer uh, before we actually show solutions. So that's kind of the process and some of the points that we talk about and uh, how we go about uh, identifying the, the needs to give the solutions. Well, Eldon, it sounds like a pretty easy process. No, just kidding. It's not that easy, I can tell. But I, I love how you folks have put it all together. It's the full circle. And anyone that needs help can reach out to you, I would imagine. Absolutely. All right, let's switch gears. Let's go back to Micah and talk more about her challenges with the school. So Micah, um, tell us, what has changed? Let's go to this. What has changed for your school? So the schools that have received new equipment. So we also got like the robotic auto scrubbers, but we also got the T350s too, which are the chariot style auto scrubbers. The ones that received this new equipment, it helped boost morale because they felt like they were being supported by having this. Yes, like we can't find staff for them, but we can provide them with better equipment so they can do their job more efficiently. and. I just feel like talking to these guys and I know their challenges and stuff, they feel heard. They feel like they're not alone in this. And they were feeling alone about, you know, a couple of years ago and they do, they feel heard and it's definitely helped boost their spirits, especially during this pandemic. So you've touched on it a little bit, but tell us about the response of your custodial staff to these changes. So um, with COVID, they've had a lot more added responsibility. And this has definitely just helped them. You know, the, with the robotic auto scrubbers, for instance, you drive to where you need it to be, you select the route, and then it starts cleaning while you can focus or the custodians can focus on other tasks. And so we're, we're kind of killing two birds with one stone in a sense, just because it needs to get done. And the staffing just isn't there with all the demands, but we're still able to make sure that these schools are clean and safe for our students and faculty. Okay, and last question for this slide, are students and other staff noticing a difference? Yeah, um, so especially with the robotic auto scrubbers, I think we've had more of a crowd than any other time because it's just amazing to them. And it's not just students either, it's faculty. And um, it's really good to see that, that they see what we're trying to do and you know they, they support it in a way. Now we've had our, our mishaps with kids and stuff, jumping in front of the auto scrubbers and being kids in general, but it's nice to see that we haven't had as much interruptions with this process as we thought we would because they respect the process. I don't know, you know, if a kid jumps in front of a machine, I might have them drive it, put, it, put them to work, put them to work. Yeah, well, good information, uh, Mike, appreciate that. Mark, let's go back to you for a moment. Uh, what were specific challenges you encountered along the way? And if so, how did Tenant help you overcome them? Well, I mean, it was actually really great to work with Kriana. They were really organized. Uh, you know, the, the challenges we had, obviously, is implementing the program to meet their needs. And so we wanted to make sure that, uh, obviously, when we got the equipment, that it was delivered effectively and safely to the locations they needed them, and then that they knew how to use them. 
because that was obviously the key to this whole this whole project is to make sure that so it, partnering with tenant they did a great job of walking each of these facilities through the machines how they work the ins and outs helping them to be comfortable with them so that they would be used in the right way and then that saved a whole bunch of uh challenges down the road and, and we've had a great kind of reoccurring training and supporting relationship to to continue to give them the things that they need yeah i know those on the webinar today are thinking about all these robotic pieces of equipment autonomous equipment and they may they may be a little jealous, but it's available to them as well, and helps them with their work. Uh, Micah, we're going to go back to you and talk about getting making this happen. You know, you talked about your equipment and tools, but very important question here because it takes money to do this, takes budget. How did you make your business case to obtain support and buy-in to invest in new cleaning equipment? And were you able to leverage any federal funding as well? So yes, we were able to get federal funding. So we actually used some of our ESSER funds to get some of these, but um, some of our money that we used to get the machines, it was based off of the staffing. Again, we were saving a lot of money because we did not have employees. And in my mindset is if we're gonna have a custodial staff, we have a custodial budget that should stay in custodial. We should be buying them equipment that will help them out for the time being. I don't want to surplus any of that money. Let's give them better equipment here. Um, we had to use the money or the first ESSER fund. We had to use that before December 31st of 2020. And so we really took advantage of that. We were able to buy four of the robotic auto scrubbers. Last year, I had a huge surplus in hourly money. And so I was able to buy four of the T3, T, T350 auto scrubbers for some of our junior highs, and we plan on doing that in the future. Um, a big thing, too, that we're trying to do for our district is having the same equipment throughout the district so we can get parts quicker. The um, maintenance on it, like if they do break down, it's it, my guy is able to fix it a lot faster instead of waiting for parts. And two, we have a a system to where if they were to go from a different school, they would pretty much have the same piece of equipment. So we are working more efficiently here. Not often you can say you have extra money, I would imagine, but uh, it was nice. Of course, we know the pandemic has made things a bit different for everyone, but thank you for those details. And it's encouraging to know that there are ways to make that business case to, to use money for these necessary pieces of equipment and other items you need for your operation. Uh, let's go to um, Eldon and Mark for this. And as a reminder, uh, you know, if you have questions, if you have something specific to ask, put it into the Q&A part of the platform there. But Eldon and Mark, have you seen other organizations or businesses reimagine their cleaning programs? And how are the more successful ones approaching the new expectations of clean? I can start with that. I think absolutely we have seen people reimagine and reevaluate how and, and in the ways that they clean. Uh, COVID was a great impetus for that, unfortunately, in a lot of ways. But the, the transition to cleaning for health uh, is, a, is, for many, a, a big jump, a difference. And so how they would do that and how that looked for them was a whole new process and a whole new way of cleaning. And so... And, and really the importance of cleaning has, has ramped way up in the world and in obviously in our business environments. And so uh, both of those things got more attention, they got more eyes, and that was a change to the process. So we've had multiple discussions with all different segments and markets of business on how cleaning is different today. Uh, technology is another huge piece of that. Uh, I think if you just look through the COVID response and all the opportunities people had to disinfect in various ways from the types of sprayers and electrostatic and uh, even on-site manufacturing of, of different chemistry to be able to disinfect. All of those things are relatively new to lots of the customers and segments in our business. And so it's been really fun for us to be able to, to work with them, to talk about different ways that these things can happen, uh, to implement uh, amazing new technology that allows for to not only overcome the labor shortage, but also the quality of cleaning and, and the quantity of cleaning that they're doing. And so, yeah, we've seen a huge shift in this for a lot of our customers. 
Thank you, Mark. And Eldon, anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, you know, if you'd asked me that uh, a couple of years ago before COVID about reimagining, um, it would have been different, but I've got a whole new perspective now with my customers. You know, the customers are coming to me and asking how they can clean the same amount of space with fewer employees, especially since uh, you know, labor is so hard to hire now. So it gives a, us a good opportunity to talk about mechanized cleaning uh, over old technology like brooms and mops so that they can clean faster and better. Uh, for example, just within the last uh, year, uh, school districts like Granite, uh, one of the largest districts in Denver and uh, a district in Idaho that I know of, and uh, many others around the country are now using uh, you know, the widely accepted concept of autonomous cleaning um, or what we call cobots. And uh, they're able to use that to do kind of the menial task of scrubbing uh, a floor that allows then the custodians to concentrate on more high value tasks that require the human touch. Uh, when you go in to shop uh, the largest grocery retailer, the most uh, other re regional retailers or to shop the largest big box food retailers or uh, even uh, home improvement stores or if you travel through most uh, the large airports in the US or visit any healthcare facilities, you're gonna find both robotic and manual tenant equipment being used to make the job of cleaning a lot easier and faster. You know, I'm also being asked how to get more life out of a piece of equipment. You know, since maintenance dollars are having to be stretched further, and now this conversation uh, revolves around quality over price. So to reduce breakdowns and downtimes and also using factory OEM service to return equipment to service faster. So those are some of the things that I'm finding that customers are reimagining now. Very good. Uh, and Micah, let's go back to you for a question on, on this. What advice would you give to other facilities uh, thinking about how they get the most from their cleaning programs? So kind of like what Mark and Eldon were saying about how we've had to change with COVID, we got to be open-minded here with the new technologies and different systems that we have that can help do what we're trying to accomplish without spending so much time on there. Like Eldon was saying, you know, we still have to spend the human touch on it. Well, you know, are there things that we can do that we can kill two birds with one stone. Mark was talking about um, sprayers. You know, we actually have sprayers that we go around and we spray on a weekly basis, if not multiple times a week. But then we're trying to, you know, stay on top of it and be proactive instead of being reactive. But I think the biggest thing that we need to be is just open minded to the new technologies out there and really listen and to the logic. Thank you, Micah. Eldon, back to you. And I know this is something that you're proud of with Tenant. A tenant recently announced its annual Custodians Are Key contest. Can you share some details about this year's contest? Absolutely. So uh, we know that uh, the key role that custodians play in keeping you know, our schools clean and the, the difference they make, especially in the lives of students and staff and teachers over just you know, the cleaning that they do. Um, and Tenet is wanting to hear these stories. And so we've had our, our in the process of our third annual Custodians Are Cute contest. And this is running through the 2021-22 school year. Um, so you can show your favorite custodian how much they mean to you uh, and to your school by nominating this uh, in the Custodians Are Cute contest. Uh, these are for custodians that are over the age, teen, over the age of 18 in North America and um, they can be nominated and nominations close uh, November 15th. So you wanna get that in soon. There are gonna be 12 finalists and one grand prize winner that will be announced through the school year. Uh, finalists receive a $500 gift card and the grand prize winner receives a $5,000 check and their school receives a $10,000 check. So, uh, go to uh, the nominate the website that's listed on your screen there. It's the www.tenantco.com backslash custodian. And uh, we hope that this is going to spotlight uh, these high valued employees that are on the front lines of our schools. Very good and a nice contest. It's nice to see you folks at Tenant do this. 
Well, I tell you what, I, that covers our main program, but we have the ever popular Q&A session and we have several questions from our audience. So if you put in a question, we'll try to get to all of them. Um, and Micah, we're gonna go to you on this one. And you touched on this, but maybe more from a personal perspective. Could you share any more details on getting leaders in your district to approve the new equipment? Obviously, some must have thought that you had plenty of equipment and should just continue as you were. So there was a lot of discussion here on why we needed certain things. And there were definitely some people, some of my higher ups that wouldn't budge. And so it took a lot of convincing and explaining to them the importance of what we do. And if we can have certain equipment, we are just, we're being more effective. We're being more efficient. We're able to get everything done in the time that we have. And it's just getting more and more. And so when situations would be asked, hey, during COVID, we need you guys to do this, this, and this. Okay, well, you're asking us for this. What do we get in return? And so it was a lot of compromise on this, but eventually they started to see the light that, okay, we needed this. We have money. We have funds to do it. Let's take advantage and get the custodians what they need. And two, with morale, I think they could tell that they were starting to really see the effects and feel the effects of it. And it was starting to wear them down. And so to boost morale to, they started to actually listen and get us what we needed. Don't give up. It sounds like I heard that a few times. You keep asking and you, you justify your case because we have to clean, it has to be a clean facility. Thank you, Micah. Let's go to you, Eldon, for this question. Uh, what do facility or operation leaders need to be thinking about when it comes to investing in automated cleaning equipment? So, um, it, you know, it kind of depends on what automated means, whether it's uh, just a, a mechanized scrubber or sweeper versus a robotic scrubber. Um, but uh, some of the things that need to be considered is, you know, what is the need? Uh, where is it going to be used and how is it going to be used? Um, can you get, uh, is there, are there employees that uh, can't get everything done? And so will this piece of equipment help with that? Uh, obviously funding is a big part of that. So we've got to look at different funding options. Uh, sometimes using financing will help uh, versus capital funds. Um, but then uh, if it's in a, a government or a school type facility, uh, there's government grants available. So um, I think having a good frank discussion with uh, either one of our distributor partners or a manufacturing partner like myself and finding out what all of the different needs are uh, versus what uh, is available, then that then can start the, the conversation and help lead down a process that will narrow that down and, and find the, the right piece of uh, either equipment or process that will help that. Thank you. Mark, let's talk about equipment usage. So obviously when there's a purchase that people have to learn how to use it, how long did it take to deploy and train the operators on this type of new equipment? So uh, there were really just uh, two sessions per school, uh, but it wasn't a long process in receiving the equipment. Uh, and especially now with manufacturing delays and all the ports being full and all of the issues we have relative to that, those lead times are extending, but for this, in this purposes, it was about two and a half, three months to, to get all the, well, two and a half months to get the equipment there. And there's just a few sessions, one or two to train them on the use of the machines. And so once we got them here, it was, it was pretty quick and they had a constraint on the, the time that the, the machines needed to be here and that those funds needed to be used. And we were able to accommodate that. And th that's what worked out great in this situation. But uh, you know, it, the, the lead time on the machine itself is probably the biggest concern right now. But once we receive it and get it to the customer, that's a very, it was a very quick process for us to get to the schools and the custodians and teach them how. Yeah, that was a good question. People want to know how long will it take for sure. Uh, Eldon, back to you on the, this autonomous robotic equipment. You know, we saw some images and we, we know what they look like. They look pretty neat. Are they safe to run while students are in the building? or they, should they be used after hours? Thank you. Um, so autonomous equipment is very, very safe. 
And what we're actually finding is that uh, equipment that's run in autonomous mode has up to about 75% less maintenance just because it does not run into anything. So being used around people, uh, this, these pieces of equipment have uh, LIDAR as well as 2D cameras, 3D cameras, and sensors. And uh, I don't know if you know what LIDAR is, but uh, that's the, the processor, the, the technology that the big jet engines, big jet airliners use to come park their landing gear on that little 12 inch square right at the, at the gate. So it's very, very precise. And so when you combine that with the, the cameras and the sensors, it sees about 35 feet in front of it. And it, uh, I have never seen it touch or run into anything. And I've, I've deployed a lot of these machines and it's just amazing, you know, especially the first time you see it, uh, how precise it can be and how safe it is. So it's, it's a very safe technology. You know, that's good to hear because Micah students like to jump in front of the equipment. It sounds like happens once in a while. So yeah, when that happens, it always stops. <laughs> yeah, take out that human element. It might be a little safer. Thank you for that information. Uh, Micah, we're going to ask you a couple of questions next. How did your staff respond to the robotic equipment and the other new equipment when it arrived? So um, with the robotic auto scrubber, at first they were nervous. They were a little nervous. They were like, oh, it's going to steal our jobs and just kind of everyone's um, mentality there that they're going to get replaced with the robot when at all actuality, like Eldon was saying, it's not a robot, it's a cobot. Like we know we still need to maintain the machine. We still need to um, drive it to the location, program it, everything. It just helps during those few hours that it's auto scrubbing. So they were a bit nervous there, but after they started using it and they started to see how it was um, supporting them and how they were benefiting from it, they definitely liked it. And, you know, our custodians are quite grateful when they do get new equipment. They are very, very excited to see it. And so with all the new equipment that we've received from Brady and Tenet, they've been very, very excited. We've heard nothing but great feedback. But yeah, just at the beginning with the robotic auto scrubbers, they were a little nervous. Nervous, but happy to get it and excited. So mm -hmm. all of you uh, managers out there watching this, make your people happy, right? Give them, give them the best equipment you can. Micah, here's another question for you. It, it's if you're running the robotic scrubbers while students are in school, and it sounds like you are, how do you pre-sweep? And the reason for the question is little items can get in the squeegee and create unwanted streaks. Yep, so we still have to sweep as normal. Um, it is what it is but it definitely helps with the auto scrubbing time. So in the pictures that were showed earlier, that's over at our um, largest high school that we have in Granite. And so it takes a long time to sweep, but it also took a long time to auto scrub. So we were actually able to cut their time in half on how often they're spending on the floors. Um, but we still have to manually go in and sweep. There's you know, get, no getting around that for the time being. Um, we do prefer to have these run at night though, so we don't have students interfere with it. In that picture, they were actually cleaning the cafeteria, so they already did their pre-cleaning in there and then just ran the auto scrubber while they were doing all the, their other items. All right, thank Jeff, you. Jeff, could I jump in there real quick? You bet. Uh, with the robotic auto scrubbers, they do have a little skirting around the front and the sides as well. So if there does happen to be a, a piece that gets missed or something, that does help to keep it out of the squeegee and the brush area. Yeah, planning ahead, good stuff. Eldon, since we've got you, here's a question that you can answer. Does Tenet conduct site surveys or consulting in every region? And will they come in to discuss comprehensive cleaning programs specifically for a facility? Absolutely. So. Uh, we, we have hundreds of uh, people like myself, uh, manufacturer representatives across the United States. Uh, we're all trained with the same processes, the same information. Uh, we pretty much all do the same process. And so that is available to every place that uh, tenant is available, which is all of North America, South America, and, and worldwide now as well. So. Uh, we do have that available. We do partner with uh, uh, 
good quality distributors like Brady Industries uh, around the country. So uh, between you know that partnership, we're always able to uh, complete that process for the customers. Yeah, your phone's going to be ringing now. Thank you for that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, we have just one more question for today, and Mark, it's for you. Uh, when creating cleaning programs, how do we best ask for support from cleaning supply companies and distributors? It's a really good question. Um, you know, I think it, it work, the working relationship with your distributor is really important. And that's how you communicate, how they communicate back. And then the, you're frank in these discussions of what really you need. I, I, it takes us so long in lots of cases to get to the real problem because facilities aren't willing to share those things with us. And, and we are absolutely here at your service to help and to help find solutions. We're exposed to so many more products and manufacturers than you will ever be because of the nature of our business. And so that's what we want to bring to you is that expertise. But if you have real problems, be frank with us, share with us exactly where you're at and what, you know, whether it's constraints in staffing or budget or the, the quality of clean is not where you want it to be. You don't like the products, whatever it is. And then we can work with you to develop solutions. Now, the, the program itself is really in the very best situation is kind of a dance between the both of us, right? Where you, there are things that you know you can perform and execute and other things that we may have great ideas, but there's no way you could pull that off. And so just this frank, open, honest communication back and forth and that we work together to find a solution that will really work. And I can't tell you how many times we've presented a program and worked to start to implement that. And immediately within the implementation, we realize that we need to adjust it. And so we do. And so we will. And so it's being flexible and being willing to, I think the other challenge that we have with a lot of facilities is they're not open to a different way and, and changing with technology and changing with the opportunities that come. And it's been really fun through COVID to see a lot of that shift a little bit. The technology is embraced versus pushed away. You know, I'll do it the old way. I'll, I'll push my dust mop and that will be what I do or whatever that is. And so uh, we love just to bring you new things. And if it's not functional for you and it doesn't work for you, then we'll move on. And we'll do it differently. But it's a really fun process for us to kind of find the best opportunity and way within your facility. So frank, open communication, be honest with us be willing and open to entertain new technology and then we can find a happy place together. Sounds good. I said that was the last question, but we do have another one. Actually, two we'll try to blend together. Micah, this is all for you, I believe. But Eldon and Mark, if you have something to add at the end, that's fine. Um, how did you coordinate the training for your custodians? And then someone else also wants to know about programming the equipment. So let's toss that at you. So we actually did a training with all of our head custodians and um, associate custodians, so our night supervisors, with Brady and with Tenet. And we actually did it at a school, and we spent a few hours over there just running through the basics of the program. And um, Eldon was very involved with this, and he actually went out to each school specifically and talked to the head custodians, help um, program it for their schools and walk them it. So it's not hard to program because you just got to go through the motion of it. But once it's programmed, it's ready to go. But we had a lot of support from Brady and Tenet in getting these trainings done and getting the auto scrubbers set up to where they needed to be. I'll, I'll jump in on that question as well. Uh, in fact, I just did another demonstration for another school district uh, last week. And, uh, you know, when we bring out of a piece of equipment, uh, we always like to show the equipment, kind of some of the features of it and, you know, the, the uh, manual part of it, as well as the autonomous part of it. Uh, and that took about 20 minutes to go around the whole machine. But uh, then we started sh showing the, the uh, programming of the autonomous part. And within just a couple of minutes, uh, the guy that was sitting on the machine, uh, I showed him once when we were going around the machine. And he jumped on and he just went. It's it's so easy technology to use that he just jumped on it and started doing it himself uh, from one time seeing it. So it's very, very simple and very easy and, and it doesn't take long at all. All one right. Of the most rewarding, one of the most rewarding parts for us in this was that 
it's, you know, we work on the function of the machine and they see how it works and how it programs and how it operates. And that's fun. But then the light bulb kind of turning on as to all the, the time this will give them back and talking with custodians, what they'll do with that time and how great this is going to be. And it's a really fun evolution to watch as, as their eyes get open to, you know, really what this technology can do and mean for them. Well, our last question was a good one, I guess. It worked out nicely. So thank you all for those details. And we want to thank everyone here who attended the webinar today, We, our panelists and our sponsors. What a great program this was. Hopefully some information has come to you, some strategies you might use, and you'll be able to empower your organization to do a better cleaning uh, with modern equipment. Today's recording of this program will be available soon. You'll be receiving a link to this recording if you registered. So uh, look for that email with access to that recording. So thank you all. And now let's all go clean something. <laughs>